We get the best of both worlds. The fastest reflexes modern technology has to offer onboard computer-assisted memory and a lifetime of on-the-street law enforcement programming. It is my great pleasure to present to you Robocop. This guy is really good. He's not a guy, he's a machine. Old Detroit has a cancer. Cancer is crime. Let the woman go. You are under arrest. You, you better back up, pal! Your move, creep. What are your prime directives? You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. What is this shit? Anything you say may be used against you. He's a cyborg, you idiot. You recorded every word you said. You're dead. We killed you. His memory's admissible as evidence. You're gonna have to kill it. Get in the car, for God's sake! <laughs> Robocop, the future of law enforcement. Welcome to They Call This a Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and other podcast services by searching They Called Us a Movie. We are part of the Main Amy Network, and to find more from us, check out the website at themainamy.com or on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The Main Amy. We are also now a proud member of Geek Fives Nation. You can find them at gvnation.com. Welcome back to the They Called Us a Movie. This is Anthony Del Vecchio. And with me, as always, is Dan Aquino and Mark Meyer. Say hello, gentlemen. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. Why aren't advertisements for products and games as good as they were in the 80s now? Because watching these fake ads were just, I was like, yes, I want all of these products. I think because there was no, like, guideline for what kids could watch in the 80s. It was was like, this is, like, they just gave you everything. It was great. Yeah, because I now want to play Nukem. I just know it's like a mixture of Risk and Battleship. I have Mm -hmm. no idea. (laughs) That's a good point. I think that's kind of what it is, right? (laughs) Yeah. I was laughing at the line, no more military aid for you. (laughs) (laughs) Making a satire in the 80s must have been so much fun. So much to go off of. Now it's it's just mostly sad. (laughs) It's really, at this point, it's just pointing a mirror at ourselves. And like, this is what you've done. This is what you've brought upon yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's not lighthearted anymore. (laughs) There's not enough cocaine around now. No. That's one thing that movies sorely miss, I, I think. <laughs> yeah, we've replaced the cocaine with antidepressants. That's what we. Yeah. That's what gets, yeah. <laughs> gets us through these days. But before we get into this week's movie, what have you guys been watching? Oh, that is a good question. I always uh, surprise you every week. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know what it is. It during the day, I'll be thinking, okay, this is what I've watched. This is what I've watched, and then we'll sit down to talk, and I'll completely go blank. I'm like, oh shit, I, I have to remember everything now. I went back and watched Mad Max Fury Road, okay. and I forgot how good that movie is. Yeah, It's so much fun, and but it's really just like one long car chase. Yep. And they But they managed to make it, 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 it's never boring. No, not at all. I believe they're making a Furiosa prequel with yes. Anya Taylor-Joy in it. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I heard. Would, I, you know, I like her. I think she's a great actress, and I'm sure the movie will be very good. I wish they had just kept Charlize Theron yeah. instead, and maybe she'll make a cameo or whatever, but yeah, I would have rather have just had another, like a a, sequ- a sequel, really. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would have preferred a sequel, too. Yeah. I, everyone loves Charlize Theron. But I don't think anybody, I've ever heard anybody say anything bad about Charlize Theron. She was too busy having a really awesome haircut in Fast 9 to be able to do a sequel to Fury <sighs> Road. <laughs> well, I was gotta bring up the fast movies. Well, you, it's a if you say it's about family. I'm you open, you, you open the door by mentioning Charlize Theron, who was <laughs> in the last one. 
That could be about anybody. <laughs> yeah, there's nine of those movies. Everybody's exactly. been in a fast movie. There's so, uh, there's so many landmines. It's like the last level of Minesweeper. <laughs> oh, you know, Mark, you you bring up her hairstyle, and a lot of people, you know, it's not fair. She has a terrible hairstyle, and she still is like drop dead gorgeous. The reason why I watched Fury Road was my sister was over for the holidays, and she had never seen it, so I put it on. And Jen made a, a comment that you know she has her head shaved, and she's wearing grease on. It's like a I guess a war paint. She's wearing grease. Like, even with all that. I'd still do her. You know what? Yeah, I, so would I. You're on to something here. <laughs> I can't yeah, disagree. She, <laughs> yeah, she had to literally do all that prosthetics and monster to make people question, question it. I was going to say, yeah. because I'm sure there are some people out there like, I could look past that. <laughs> I still would. <laughs> it's like, look, if you, if you if you fuck Charlize Theron and when she's in the prosthetics, you, you still fuck Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron. <laughs> Yeah. Right, no one's gonna blame you for it. Like, oh, really? <laughs> Monster Charlize? I don't know, man. No, everyone's gonna want to, you know, everyone's gonna want to be around you. They're gonna want to give you high fives. Yeah. Carry you yeah. on their shoulders. <laughs> yeah, the main reason I would want a sequel to that movie is just to see how many more guitar guys they can oh, cook up. The, the the doof, or, I th- right? Is that yeah. what it's called? Something man, like that, that. That thing was so badass. Yeah, he doesn't oh. care about the fighting and all the war going on. He just wants to rock, man. Yeah, he's <laughs> just out there. Dropping some some righteous riffs. <laughs> what about you, Mark? What have you watched um, this week? Only movie I watched this week was Christmas Story on Christmas. Watched it two times. Still great. The thing I've been doing over the last three weeks is keep saying to myself, I should bite the bullet and check out Happiest Season. I keep seeing ads for I should just bite the bullet and watch that movie. And then I don't watch it. So I don't now know. Now it's too late. Yeah, Christmas exactly. Movie. There's no point yep. in watching it now. Yeah, no point. That was my last week. I'll watch it and then I'll surprise them on the podcast. And then, I, but yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was, it was Christmas Story, and then I think we had Elf on at one point during Christmas Eve and all that. The most important thing that had any tie to a TV show or anything is my nieces got the uh, game Plinko, so we put a whole bunch of that <laughs> for a while. That's the best I got tied to a TV show. So do, does your sister's house house just have a giant Plinko board now? No, it's a little mini one. <laughs> but me and my sister immediately started thinking of ways you could turn it into a drinking game. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah. And it was just like, it's so easy. You just put some masking tape over the dollar amounts. Yeah. And write things on it. And it has little lights and it plays the music. And my youngest niece got three out of four ten thousand dollars $10,000 on there. Nice. And then she she never seen the game before. So she was like, ah, whatever. You know, <laughs> she did it. <laughs> Yeah, so it's actually a pretty cool board. I should I should have taken a photo of it, but yeah, it's definitely something that could be if it's easy to find, you know, something that you could have out for gatherings and stuff. Just turn it into basically anything. We could we turn it into a stupid thing for extra life where we drop it and whatever it lands in is something that happens on stream. You know, like it's got so many universal properties just because of the way that game's set up. But anyway, as long as one of the options is not eating a hot chip. That's the ten thousand dollar one. Oh God, that never again. <laughs> so what I watched, I watched one movie besides the Christmas. So I did watch Christmas Story for the first time in the Christmas season on Christmas Day. Saved it, but I watched Soul, the new Pixar movie, which was good. I feel like with Pixar movies, I always really enjoy them. I never love them. I enjoy all of them, but like I never sit down like you know what movie I really want to watch right now. And I'm gonna pop yeah. it on is Wally. Right. I like Wally. Like up, I love like all the movies. Like I there's besides the Good Dinosaur, there's not a Pixar movie I've sat through where like man that movie sucked. I um, think there's like one of the Cars movies I've I've never really enjoyed. Planes. I've never seen a single Cars movie. I don't know if even Planes is a Pixar. I think that's a Disney movie. A is Disney it, like animation. Like, yeah, it's kind of like not an official one. Okay, it feels not official. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, you, you get Dane Cook to star in your movie. It's like, well, this isn't really... It's, it doesn't count. If, if, if it works, <laughs> great. If not, we're just kind of distancing ourselves. Soul's good. Really good. Obviously, really good looking. All Pixar movies are really well made. It's, it's similar to Inside Out. It's like an all minority cast in terms of the characters besides Tina Fey. So that's good. But it's... It's a movie about jazz. 
<laughs> right. And I'm just not super into jazz. It's really not. It's kind of that's a window dressing for a deeper story about what it means to be alive and what the point of life is and what makes a life worth living. And those are all really interesting stories to tell in a what is essentially a children's animated movie. But obviously they're Pixar does. There are deeper meanings to to the story itself. I prefer like Inside Out, I thought was a more interesting story, but this was good. I enjoyed it. So I watched that while everybody else was watching Wonder Woman 84 and having a terrible time with it. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the only other thing I watched this week was a Netflix show that my wife put on and I watched it. It was called Bridgerton. Uh, I was going to ask if you had been subjected to that. I did not. And it's basically the 1700s England, rich people, very attractive people just fucking their brains out. (laughs) Were there attractive people in the 1700s? The show, I guess, pretends that there are. I don't think they existed until around like 1830, 1840. Every character in the show could get it. (laughs) (laughs) Male and female. Male, female. Oh, yeah. yeah. The lead dude, man, he's had me he had me thinking some things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but if I were <laughs> I could do worse. <laughs> yeah. So I'd be lucky if, if he had me. If you want to see some pretty people fucking in big old ball gowns, Bridgerton's the show for you. That that's a huge fetish, I bet. Like I can't I can only get off to people in seventeen hundred ball gowns. <laughs> A lot of bodices and frocks <laughs> and shit. It has to take at least 20 minutes before they start fucking because they're taking all of that stuff off. Yeah. That was it, a joke it, from uh, Robert Wurr's, um history thing he did for HBO. I forget the name of it. Arliss. I've never seen that. Yeah. He said the thing about that there was no such thing as a 1700s quickie. Yeah. <laughs> because he had the because they were talking about uniforms and stuff in the 1700s or something or whatever he's discussing and then he had these two people run in and act like they were trying to take their clothes off to have sex oh boy and the like really fancy dressed people were like fidgeting and trying to figure it out <laughs> and then like the poor people was just basically flipped up oh yeah the shirt it was like i was just making a joke that like the stuff they wore was just impossible to do anything in yeah so i didn't hate myself when my wife put it on so you know your wife is her choice or- yeah, if your wife or girlfriend makes you watch it, you could do worse. <laughs> so, and there's pretty, people fuck- say. there's pretty people fucking, so. Who's going to say no to that? <laughs> Before we get into this week's episode, we're going to take a quick break to listen to some ads, and we will be right back. And welcome back, and now it's time to get into this week's movie. And this week's movie is a little bit of a cheat, but it was also a listener request, so... Dan, do you want to introduce it? Because it was a friend of yours that told us to do this movie. And it's probably a little bit better than this podcast usually does. But we wanted to watch a good movie for once in a while. (laughs) Yeah, I think we deserve it. You know, this being a a brand new year, we want to start out on a good note, I felt. But yeah, a good friend of mine, he listens to the podcast. And one of his favorite episodes was The Running Man. Ever since he listened to it, he said, you got to do RoboCop, you got to do RoboCop. Because he would always, when we worked together, he would always quote RoboCop. So, like, one of his favorites was, the Tigers are playing tonight. (laughs) So, so he would, you know, we'd be sitting at work. He's like, man, I got to get home, man. I got to get home. The Tigers are playing tonight. So, in honor of my good friend, I chose RoboCop to be our first review of the year. I got to say, that is a weird quote to take out of this movie. (laughs) There's there's so many good quotes. There is. (laughs) Everything Kurtwood Smith says in this movie. Yeah, it's it's just totally quotable. But where are you guys coming from with RoboCop, Dan? This is, again, where we were talking about product of its time. The first time I saw RoboCop, I think I was like five or six. (laughs) It it was good because we were, you know, we were young enough where our parents kind of didn't care what we watched. Because RoboCop is obviously not meant for children. (laughs) No. But. They also made a, a cartoon show out of it and had action figures of RoboCop, of which yep. I owned RoboCop, the squad car, and Ed 209. So Good. I had all of those. I've seen this movie a few times. I love it. It's fucking out there. It's crazy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm glad that we, we got to do it. What about you, Mark? My three main touchstones with RoboCop, I've seen the movie a few times, like Dan said, was obviously the cartoon. 
because it was it was definitely in the rotation of cartoons and stuff. And I had RoboCop, the action figure. But the outside of that, my other touchstone was seeing him show up on professional wrestling when I was five years old as Sting's best friend and <laughs> save Sting from being trapped in a cage by the dastardly Ric Flair. And RoboCop never entered the ring. As I only found out later rewatching clips because I had the memory of Robocop entering the ring as a five or six year old. But he does not. He just points <laughs> the ring for first thing to get back in there. And that I saw the third movie in theaters. It was a, another one of those situations where it was like, oh, you like all this stuff. And I don't think the third one was as gory or, you know, no, it definitely I wasn't. It was way more kid friendly. Yeah. And then so we, I went and saw that in the theaters. So coming into this, I haven't seen Robocop in a while. Probably back when I was, when Netflix first started, and just about anything on DVD. I think I watched it back in college with that. And then obviously the joke on Family Guy about the opening scene with him. It, it was the other thing uh, recently. But I forgot how actually competent of a movie it is for how ridiculous the character is. Like there's actually a through plot that has sort of grounded in as much reality as future sci-fi can have it tied way too much to today, by the way, in terms of <laughs> corporations having way too much power. It was a really good movie. It only really got hokey where you could see where you could take it a little bit crazy near the end with that final line being delivered. Besides that, just the actors in it were just amazing. Like, Going, oh, yeah, these guys would have had careers before I saw them on television as they were popping up on there. It's a fun movie. It's it's definitely one of the best. I put it in the same class as like Terminator 1 in that mm -hmm. most people remember the goofiness of the movies after and not how much of a actually good movie. I think Rocky falls into that as well. How much of an actual good movie the original idea was. It seems to be a time period when that happened. But yeah, it's a lot better than I thought it was. Okay. I also had RoboCop the action figure. That's a good question. I might even put it on Twitter. It was like, who had the, the RoboCop action figure? But I don't remember watch. I remember the cartoon existing. I don't remember watching it ever. But I don't remember the first time I saw it, probably when I was young. And I hadn't seen it for quite some time. And I remember in college, one of my roommates was obsessed with trying to track down the, at the time it was out of print, Criterion DVD because it was the only way to watch the original director's cut of it, which is what we watched, by the way. So I heard him being obsessed with that and always trying to find it. And I watched it not too long ago. And then I watched it again, like a, about a month ago, I think, which kind of, I think we even brought it up in, you know, what we watched during the week a couple of months ago. And I think that spurned Dan to decide to pick it. And I'm just going to come right out and say it hot take this is might be the greatest movie of all time robocop is amazing <laughs> yeah it's a little bit of a hot take i'd say yeah uh, so, it's what, so what fucking makes you good. say that it's so fucking good every single single line as we said kurtwood smith yeah boddicker is such a good villain oh he he's such a shit heel and but he's just so smarmy like when yeah. he comes in when he finally gets arrested and he's just like give me my fucking phone call Oh, yeah. so good. Uh, you, uh, named, I, you named one of your fantasy teams after one of his lines. Bitches leave, yep. Bitches leave, yeah. <laughs> another great uh, quote. Another great quote. I'm, like, looking at the poster right now. Such an iconic poster of him, like, standing out, outside of the car door. Ugh, I, man. At one of the Comic-Cons I went to, someone was selling that poster, but it was almost like Fleer kind of holographic look to it. And I wanted it so badly. It was sixty dollars. Mm. Like, oh, you know, I, I can't really afford that right now. I can't I can't justify buying it. I regret not getting that poster because it was such a good looking poster. I, I think poster. it was by bottleneck okay. poster. So I might I'll look it up if I can. But oh man, I, I do regret not having that poster. Yeah. I don't know why this poster is so burned into my memory banks from like nostalgia, but just I don't think my parents owned it on DVD or like VHS at all. That poster is staring at me right now. It's just synonymous with the 80s for me. And I think I may have also played the video game when I was younger. Oh, I never sure, played the video yeah. game. Maybe that's maybe it's just like the memory of seeing it on shelves, you know, on yeah. uh, on the video game racks might have might be it. Yeah, yeah, because my my one cousin just had like a whole bunch of NES, just random NES games when they were coming out new, like 
her mother would just buy her just any licensed thing from a movie, which was good in some cases because Jaws and bad in this case, RoboCop. But I think we may have seen it more walking up and down Blockbuster than maybe a actual movie poster. Sure. Yeah. It's obviously it's not the greatest movie of all time, but it's so much fun. It's mm-hmm. it really is. Yeah, it's fantastic. Just even the the segue like news reports and commercials are just better than they they need to be. Just the satire is just so thick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this movie. Yeah. So what that's Lisa Gibbons? Lisa it's, Gibbons, yeah. Yeah. You know what this this movie kind of reminds me of? I don't know if you gentlemen have ever read the uh, the Dark Knight Returns, the uh, Frank Miller I've tried to. It's almost essentially the same thing where it, throughout the the panels they have news broadcasts. Yeah. So it's very similar to that where you know you get a bunch of action and then you kind of get a news broadcast about people being killed in an earthquake or whatever is going on. But to me it's like well that kind of seems out of place but at the same time in the 80s it it would have made perfect sense because there was a lot of turmoil going on and mm-hmm. Things it's are very great, uncertain. It's great world building too. Yes, because even in the in the news broadcast, these people are so out of touch. Like people are dying. I think one of the first ones is four cops were killed, and one was kind of clinging to life. And the yeah. news reporter goes, "Good luck, Officer Frank, or what? You know, whatever." No and one it does talks that, that zoom way. in of their eyes. It's really great. Yes. Yeah. It's there's a lot of interesting choices made in this movie, but they all work. Yeah. As you said, the world building is great here because you learn a lot in just those opening scenes, even before you meet Murphy, just how shitty of a place this Detroit is and how shitty the world is. Because apparently there's all these world conflicts in like Mexico and South America and going on at the time that you're just like, okay, it's like what they tried to do in Double Dragon a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just thinking about. Yeah. But they didn't succeed as much as as RoboCop did. But I I think the greatest thing, adding on to what you said, Dan, is I think the addition of commercials just sold the lack of, I would say lack of sensitivity. There's probably a better word for it. You know, we joke about nukem the game, but that's basically your your job is nuking the planet is the goal of that game. And they, they play it off as a laugh. Oh, you nuked the planet. Ha, ha, ha. You know. You still have Cold War is lingering. It's it's coming to an end at that point, but yeah. it's yeah. still fresh in people's minds. And even the tagline for that game is get them before they get you. And <laughs> so it's it's basically yeah. just there's no sensitivity. You're playing with nuclear missiles as if there's no repercussions. And that's that's how it's treated. But you feel the helplessness in this movie of the citizens of old Detroit, the corruption it really is a reflection of where we are today. Almost there's, you know, there's a lot of people who are helpless and there's a lot of areas that are not doing well. And there's a lot of corruption still. Nothing Mm -hmm. has really changed. Yep. So RoboCop from 1987 directed by Paul Verhoeven also directed total recall, basic instinct, showgirls, starship troopers, and hollow man stars, Peter Weller, Nancy Allen, Dan O'Hurley. Ronnie Cox, Kurtwood Smith, Miguel Ferrer, Ray Wise, and Paul McCrane has an IMDb score of 7.5 and a Rotten Tomato score of 90%. Budget, $13 million. Box office made $53 million. Box office smash hit. We also have a bunch of repeaters from other movies. We have Sage Parker, who played Tyler, one of the technicians. She was in The Dirt Bike Kid. Dan O'Hurley, who plays the old man, was none other than... Connell Cochran from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Lee DeBro, who plays Sal, led a part in Skyscraper. And Scott Thompson, who's uncredited here, played Preacher in Twister. Wow, so a lot it, of returning. It bothered me the entire movie where I knew that lab technician from. <laughs> the woman with Sage the glasses. Park. Yep. It bothered me, and I couldn't find it on IMDb <laughs> because they didn't really say her name. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> yep. The dirt <laughs> bike kid. That was the glasses were the giveaway. Yeah. Where I was like, I've seen that. I've seen those before. To me, there's actually one thing in this movie that doesn't work, and okay. it's Officer Lewis. Okay. She's to me, she was pointless. But then, like going back and thinking about it, 
I guess she was the link between Android Murphy and yeah. real Murphy. Yeah. But other than that, she's of no help whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the only thing that doesn't work in, in that regard is that this whole link she has is dependent on one day on the force. Together. Sure. Yeah, it's you very know? quick. Yeah. If they had been old time partners, like that whole part of the story is makes no sense. Even all the emotional scenes in that opening thing when he's going through the locker room would have hit harder if he knew the cop that they take the nameplate off the locker and all that. You know, it's weird. I was thinking because in, in this movie, they don't really show you Murphy's family all that much. So like you get a few flashbacks here and there. But then the god awful remake they do the exact opposite. They give you a bunch of time of Murphy at home with the kid and his wife. And I guess that was their way of kind of eliminating the Lewis character, the Officer Lewis character. Mm -hmm. And I would have to say, I, I don't think either of them really worked all that well, but it's necessary, right? You, you have to have that human connection yeah, yeah, or else it doesn't work i think what they they do here for his family life is perfect it, it's not That's too one much scene it's one scene where he goes back to his home and it's bringing up all bunch of whatever memories he has left in his head he's bringing it up and it works perfectly okay it's, it's maybe a two minute scene doesn't last very long it shows and doesn't tell doesn't really you know doesn't beat you over the head of it does exactly what it needs to do to to have that emotional gut punch. And I think it's one of the best scenes in the film is that scene when he tracks down his old house and goes in and walks around. Perfectly yeah. done. Beautiful. I, in a movie I, that is dirty and and silly and cheesy. It's a moment in this movie that is feel maybe even feels a little bit out of place, but it's like the emotional gut punch. And I think it works. So do you think it could have just been, you know, we get rid of the Lewis character for that? if you lose her that you're losing a lot but i do think that having that link is there i think if you did have that link where they're, oh, they've been on the force together for like two years they've been partners and that so i think that would be a little bit stronger mm -hmm. i don't know if i would lose her but i think i, I would amend kind of their relationship a little bit okay yeah. i think yeah i think that's a good way to solve that problem yeah someone that you spent a day with or two days with you're all right well I don't have that strong of a connection to that person outside of I work with them. Yeah. And and cops, they're a dime a dozen in old Detroit, apparently. They die every day. Yeah. So it's just, oh, here's another guy in and another guy out. Yeah. You need that sympathetic humanity character once Murphy becomes RoboCop. You need, you need somebody there to be that person. Right. And there's no one else, really. But yeah, it is weird that they haven't been, like, partners for extended period of time yeah you guys want to get the plot for that i'm still looking for that um <laughs> poster i can't find it but yes let's let's <laughs> yeah, go into sure the plot. let's do it what do you got for us dan all right so i just want to give a quick shout out to our friend tia and her podcast the top 10 with tia it's a weekly podcast that comes out sundays where tia and her friends discuss top 10 lists top 10 movies top 10 directors whatever they decide to sink their teeth into it's a lot of fun she's a good person a good friend of the podcast you can follow her on twitter it's tc underscore stark and tell her they called this a movie sent you all right yeah we're gonna get into the plot but before we do we're gonna take a step back and listen to some messages from friends of the podcast we will be right back hey this is ken m padawan j coach duffy from the ocho duro parlay hour podcast Every week, the ODPH is talking sports, movies, TV, comics, and more. It's always a parlay of topics on each episode. You can find the ODPH on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and wherever you find great podcasts, such as the one you're listening to right now. Don't forget to check out OchoDuroParlayHour.com, where you can find the links to all of the ODPH social media accounts, links to the bands whose music you hear each week on the show, hashtag 607 podcast info, and parlay points are our companion block section of the show. Thanks for listening to the ODPH. Now get back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Welcome, travelers. It seems like you're looking for a story. Well, I got one for you. It involves adventure, friendship, and all hey, sorts hey, of... Hey, uh, Earl, why don't you tell him about that time I stole that big-ass melon? Yeah, yeah, I, I was going for more... Or you could tell him about the time I kicked your ass, Earl. I wouldn't ever tell him Do I need to get time. my ref gear on? Okay, everyone, shut up. Now come with me. 
as I tell you a story from afar. Hey everybody, my name's David. I'm the DM for From Afar Podcast. A From Afar Podcast is all about four friends separated by distance, brought together by adventure. Hope you all stop by and give us a listen. Thanks. And welcome back, and now it's time to get into the plot for RoboCop. We open up on a media break, local news program starring Lisa Gibbons. LOL local news, right guys? Yep. <laughs> what is the news? <laughs> We start with a news report about a nuclear confrontation of South Africa, and then the president goes to visit the Star Wars peace platform, and a power failure causes weightlessness, but he is unharmed. The first time I saw that, I didn't know what that was. That was a real thing. Did you know that? Yes. Ronald yeah. Reagan started the Star Wars program. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. Like, what were we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what happens when you put an actor in the White House. It's very true. I hope George Lucas got some money for that. You know, right. that's hurting. <laughs> I do have to point out that I love the use of stock footage for these <laughs> oh, great. local news broadcasts. They were, they were fantastic. Just the, the thing of astronauts climbing through a hole or something. <laughs> Greatlets was this space station story. And it, some editing room had fun with that. <laughs> they cut to commercial break for new bionic hearts. And then they come back to our news stories about three police officers killed, one injured. And the blame is set on Omni, OCP, who fund the Detroit Police Department. Dick Jones, the OCP president, says it comes with the territory. If you can't stand the heat, don't become a cop, basically is what he said. That, that's a rough thing to tell your cops, man. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you don't like dying, get out of here. <laughs> So the cop that was not immediately killed at the scene, but is in critical condition, and his name is Frank Fredrickson, identifies Clarence Boddicker as the man behind the shooting. Boddicker's got like a long list of uh, crimes. Then we cut to Detroit Metro Police Department. Metro West, I believe, was officially. The uniformed police officer was sergeant, kicking out a couple of shyster lawyers. Police officer Murphy gets transferred to Metro West. Murphy goes to the locker room to get dressed. One of the officers says they should strike. And then the sergeant comes in and tells them they ain't nobody striking because that's not what cops do. Then he lets them know that Fredrickson died. It was kind of refreshing because usually the police chief is the one having the meltdown and like kicking out, you know, the, the, the hero cop. But this time he's like he is the hero, essentially, of that police station. Yeah. He's the one who's fighting for his guys and he wants what's best for the city. And you, uh, you don't really see that. Usually the police chief's a hard ass. Yeah, it's like a real police station right down to the co-ed showers. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Verhoeven would bring back at Starship Troopers. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, maybe he didn't know that people were separated by then. I, I don't know. Camaraderie, yeah. right? Or like in the future, nobody cares about nudity anymore. I wonder if he was trying to go that whole like Spartan level kind of if you, you know, you were naked next to your brother in arms, you would fight extra hard for them because like you have that intimate relationship. Maybe that's what he was going for or he just wanted, you know, boobs. I don't know. Is, is that what Spartans were like? They're like, man, I can't let that guy die. Look at how big his dick is. <laughs> right. Like... We, we need that in the gene pool. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, essentially what the Spartans would do is they would make love to each other. And that was like, so you would fight harder for your brother in arms, essentially. I'm just saying, I wonder if that's what Verhoeven was, was going for. Yeah, because it does come up twice in two similar situations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you never know. It, there could be a deeper meaning, or it could just be, again, nudity for nudity's sake. <laughs> I mean, this is the guy that did Basic Instinct, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the captain introduces Murphy to Lewis, his new partner, who is busy beating up a suspect. Hey, Cab. Yeah, I... <laughs> Lewis goes to show Murphy the streets, but Murphy jumps in the front seat and says he's driving. And he's the go, man. Yep. Right. Yeah, we, a little bit of a sexism thrown in there. <laughs> hey, you know what? He deserves to die, Murphy. Though. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's probably why she goes uh, MIA. Yeah. Uh, motherfucker. I'll teach him to drive my car. So then we cut to OCP headquarters where a couple of OCP suits are called into a meeting with President Dick Jones. OCP is set to start construction on a huge building project in downtown Detroit, but OCP is worried about the crime in downtown. So Dick Jones introduces the plan to introduce ED-209, a biped robot they plan to replace human officers with for, as he says, quote-unquote, urban pacification. Plans to eventually sell the technology means. to the military. We all know what that means. Really. Yep. <laughs> killing black people yep yep jones asks one of the suits to help with the demonstration he hands the guy a gun and tells him to point it at ed 209 
So the guy does, and Ed 209 tells him to put the gun down. He does, but Ed 209 blows him away anyway. So the old man is disappointed in the presentation and in Jones, but Morton, a suit heading up the RoboCop program, goes over Jones's head to tell the old man that he can have his program up and running in 90 days. Murphy and Lewis stop for coffee and then respond to a call. Clarence Boddicker and his goons have just done a heist, but Boddicker is pissed that they burned the money when they had to blow open a door. Murphy and Lewis pursue their van and a gunfight ensues. One of his goons gets shot in the leg and then Boddicker has him tossed out the back into the, into the squad car windshield. And right before he does, he's got that great line, can you fly, Bobby? And tosses him <laughs> out. So good. Such a great villain. I was so proud of this moment because as Jen and I were watching this, we were like, oh, he just he just threw one of his own guys? Why would he do that? This is 80s bad guy, like 101, man. If you're no good to him, you're mm-hmm. useless. Yeah. He does. You're dead weight. And he's going to make sure you're gone yeah. in like the best way possible. <laughs> Saying something pretty sweet before he does. Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing. We we don't have wicked one-liners anymore. Nope. Those are all gone. I'm trying to think of any good ones recently. I, I think it's it's seen as so cliche now. Yeah. No one's going to do it anymore. But there were so many good one-liners in this movie. And they're like re- legit good. They're not, they're not Arnold Schwarzenegger one-liners from, you know, Commando <laughs> or yeah. Batman and Robin. It, like these are actual... Like, oh shit, like this guy's badass. Yeah. I feel like the closest we've gotten in the past in recent times is the I and I am Iron Man from Endgame. Yeah, yeah. sure. Right because at the end of end, yeah, at the end of Endgame, that's a pretty good one liner. But uh, I don't know. It's it's <laughs> it's it's not as good as some of some of uh Boddicker's. Right. Bitch, bitches yeah. leave is is like an all time. Bitches leave is good. Yeah, I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of like Schwarzenegger's best ones. Well he has the uh the cooldown. Right, or let off some steam. Yeah, let off some steam, Bennett. Let off. Hey, Bennett, let off some steam. <laughs> Consider that a divorce. Yeah. Well, I, uh, he probably has a couple of good ones in um, Total Recall. Yeah, he's got the divorce one. Consider That's the that divorce. divorce, That's yeah. right. Obviously, chock full of them with Batman and Robin. Right. What, what and those aren't dinosaurs. necessarily good. <laughs> yeah, those aren't good. I'll be back. I'll be back, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's his most famous. I was just going to say Conan the Barbarian. He has the uh, lament, listen to the women lament, right? Watch your enemies driven before you. That's not really a one-liner, though. No. <laughs> that's more of just like... A thing to say. A phrase a thing to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Bobby goes flying into the windshield and the van gets away. But eventually Murphy and Lewis find the van abandoned at a steel factory. They split up. Lewis gets the drop on one of the goons, but he knocks her out and then tosses her off the platform, knocking her out. Two of the goons have a conversation about capitalism and theft, and then Murphy blows one of them away. <laughs> but he gets surrounded by Boddicker and his goons. Boddicker says, cops don't like me, so I don't like cops. Boddicker subscribes to ACAB, and yep. he blows off Murphy's hand. Well, and Murphy has a good one-liner himself in this in this scene. Right? B- uh, Boddicker says, you, you probably don't like me very much, buddy. I think you're scum. <laughs> everyone has a good life. That's got to be terrifying, right? You, know, you you know you're about to die, and everyone's just like laughing hysterically at you. Like, well, all right, well, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out on a pretty good one-liner, I guess. I, I think the one-liner to take away and even call back to it is, doesn't he say essentially, "Dead or alive, you're coming with me." Yes, yeah. that's how the one Ellie or Ellis. Emil. Emil. Emil recognized. We're like, oh, we killed you, because he he tells him at the gas station the gas station dead or alive you're coming with me yep so they blow off murphy's hand and then the rest of the goons just unload into him just blowing his arm off and just so many bullets <laughs> yeah a lot of squibs were used in this movie and like 90 percent of them were on this scene <laughs> there's a lot of blood and then somehow he's still sort of alive so Bodger puts the final bullet in his head uh, um, yeah how does he is it the body armor i guess yeah Man, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's- yeah. Zip lining across a vast valley, roasting s'mores beside the lake, white water rafting, relaxing beside an ocean view pool. Well, trying to at least. There are lots of great things to dream about doing in South Carolina. So when you're ready to visit, South Carolina is ready to make those dreams a reality. From a classic road trip to a relaxing weekend getaway, South Carolina is open for discovery. Start planning today at discoversouthcarolina.com. We're always driving to dance lessons. 
So we signed up for Know Your Drive. We save money and get closer to her dancing dreams. The daring young man on the flying trapeze. Or maybe her singing dreams. Sign up for Know Your Drive and save up to 20%. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. Products not available in every state. Discount terms apply. Visit amfam.com slash knowyourdrive for details. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> like, they all unload the, the entire clip, like, every clip that they have on them. Yeah. He must have been shot a hundred times. Yeah. Oh, easily. And then he's still really, he's not dead yet. Even when Boddicker puts that final bullet and they leave, he's still sort of alive. <laughs> right. He gets to the hospital, still, like, clinging to life. To be honest, it's... You see the the hole get blown in his head, like out the back. Yeah. The bullet goes clear through him. <laughs> yeah. Like that that's instant death, right? Yeah. If if the bullet goes straight through. If it blows out the back of your skull, usually, yeah, that's like you're not calling the ambulance, you're calling the morgue. Right. And then again, Lewis. I mean, there's really not much she can do here. She watches helplessly, and then she doesn't immediately call the paramedic. Yeah. She just kind of weeps over his semi-dead body <laughs> they called the ambulance yeah. that is one thing that made me laugh watching it not in this scene but the scene at ocp is after that guy get, gets blown away by ed 209 so i was like call the paramedics yeah, yeah. like no buddy call the coroner <laughs> right. like, don't touch him don't touch him <laughs> call the paramedics uh i don't think you're take just... their time though <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. like, if they have something else going on you know keep to that yeah it's not His a body will job. wait <laughs> so Boddicker and his goons leave and and Lewis finds Murphy completely cut to ribbons. So Murphy gets airlifted to a hospital, somehow still barely clinging to life as doctors scramble to save his life. As they work on him, Murphy has flashes of memories of his wife and son go through his head, as well as the faces of the guys that killed him. Eventually, he's pronounced dead. Some time passes and he comes to as scientists start working on him. We see the next few scenes in Murphy's perspective. Sage Parker from Dirt Bike Kid, Morton comes in and talks with the others, and we basically find out that Murphy is legally dead, and they plan to rebuild him completely. Yeah, because he we signed that some... consent form. I like this scene, or the following montage of scenes, where it's not instantaneous. It's as if this took maybe a year to do. Yeah. Because I like that. It, he keeps flashing back and forth, and it's like, it's Christmas, then it's New Year's. So it's not that they just, oh, yep, we got this all taken care of. You could tell that a lot of work was put into it and and time th that was taken to perfect it. Because Morton comes yeah. in a few times like, oh, I thought we said we were losing the arm. Oh, and, like, we got to save it. I want it gone. So th it, it wasn't just everyone agreed on it right away. It was a project. And what makes it more amazing, no matter how long it was, whether it was 90 days or six months or a year, is that when he gets back to the police station, all the same cops are still alive. Yeah, so that's and, a good thing. In, in that town that was losing cops left and right, every single cop you met in that opening montage is still there somehow. <laughs> Did you want them dead, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Right. You, you sound disappointed. Oh, no. The numbers just don't work out. <laughs> well, At least one of them they brought in more there. guys from the South. And they died. <laughs> yeah, they died. <laughs> they were just South fillers. Precinct's the red shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the farm system. So we get a couple of scenes, flashes of scenes as they continue to work on him, including a drunken New Year's party. And then Robocop is unveiled to applause. Back at the precinct, OCP comes in with Ro Robocop. They set him up in the locker room and do some diagnostics tests as the other police officers look on. At the gun range, we see all the cops practicing, including Lewis. Meanwhile, Robocop is demolishing targets with an automatic pistol. And the captain tosses Robocop a set of keys and Robocop is off to patrol the streets. Well, this is the first time we get the inkling that Lewis knows what's up because he does the gun twirl mm -hmm. and, and puts it away, which is actually that was probably a really good way to do that because it's something that would have been involuntary to him. But she would have been the only one to pick up on it. Yeah, yeah. they had so. that conversation about yeah. why he does it. And we cut to a convenience store and we get our first shot of I'd buy that for a dollar that plays on the television. And the guy at the convenience store holds up an old couple, asking for the money in the register and the safe. And he, he asks them to open the, up the safe, and while he waits, Robocop walks in. He unloads in Robocop, who then bends the barrel of the gun and clotheslines the guy into a bunch of shelves as he leaves. And then he says, thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> <laughs> There's two things I wanted to point out. The first is the, the acting by the robber. 
whose only line is fuck me fuck me fuck me <laughs> it's it's so funny i love it because i can imagine that's what a lot of people would be saying when confronted with a android <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh fuck me. And this the second thing is RoboCop isn't really into arresting people so much as just either blowing them away or severely beating the shit out of them. <laughs> so I don't oh, yeah. know if that's one of the prime directives. He does have an arrest mode. <laughs> he does, but he rarely uses it. I think he uses it once and it's to arrest Boddicker. Yeah. But he's also throwing him through plate glass windows as he reads him the Miranda rights. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, again, the 80s. This was yep. probably yeah. not frowned upon. I, but nowadays, RoboCop would have been canceled. I also do enjoy that the store owner hid the safe behind a whole bunch of empty Miller Lite cans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and the robber knew exactly where it was. Where it was. <laughs> He'd been staking out the joint. <laughs> Oh, we don't have a safe. Don't give me any of that shit. Kicks him over. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> Wasn't fooled for a second. The old Miller Lite pyramid trick. No one stacks beer like this. <laughs> so later, a couple of thugs harass a woman, first cutting her hair and then attempting to cut her dress off and attempt to rape her. And a RoboCop shows up and then the thug takes the woman as a hostage. So RoboCop shoots through her dress, hitting the dude in the dick. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And then later on, Former city council member then takes hostages at City Hall. And holy shit, this guy is so upset that he lost in an election and he wants a recount and his old job back. <laughs> yeah. And just like a ridiculous amount of requests. But that whole part hit way too close to home. <laughs> so are we saying it's only a matter of time till a certain someone takes hostages? Yep. I want a car with terrible gas mileage. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I love how uh, the car was the 6,000 sucks. sucks. I, was that on purpose? SU, SUX. Oh, I'm yes. sure it was. Okay. I don't, think, I don't think there's anything accidental in this movie. Right. There's Yeah, this, this movie's not all about uh, subtlety. Nope. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. And by spelling it out SUX, it makes it sound like it's fancy. Right. <laughs> I was waiting for them to say that like the 6,000 sucks, but no, they, they did the SUX. Yeah. While the guy taking hostages talks with the negotiator, RoboCop goes to a neighboring office. As the council member prepares to kill the mayor, RoboCop punches through the wall to grab him and then punches him out the window. Does he have a one-liner there? I don't think so, right? I don't think so, no. Yeah. They're not taking anybody into custody, though. Right, I will. He had killed a hostage. RoboCop acts more as Judge Dredd than he does sure. RoboCop. Yeah. Right, because in Judge Dredd, murder is an immediate execution yeah by the judges so robocop kind of just goes oh you murdered someone therefore you die yeah. you've given up your right to to jail i guess for a <laughs> trial yeah so much has changed since then right guys yep. oh yeah <laughs> for the better much 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 more so much has changed <laughs> what a quaint <laughs> little movie this robocop is right they they were so far off it's ridiculous <laughs> so we get a local news story about robocop at the Lee Iacocca Elementary School. I love just the dropping of capitalists in this. Lee, we got Lee Iacocca Elementary School, and then there's the Henry Ford Memorial Hospital, I think. Yeah. That's right, yes. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's another car reference in here at some point. I don't know. For some but building. I, I meant to listen for more like names like that, but I don't think I don't think I heard any off the top of my head. No, I don't think they do anymore after that. So then they ask RoboCop what his message is to the children, and he says, stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a clever stay thing to say. Stay out of trouble. All right. And then we have he, another news story about the U.S. meddling in a Mexican revolution, as the U.S. does. And then we got a commercial for... done that, so let's, <laughs> you know, give credit where credit's due. We, we've not meddled in South uh, Africa, or South American uh, affairs. I yeah, guess that's not true. depends on what you, what you think <laughs> about Venezuela. <laughs> right, that's, yeah, I was going to say, now that I come to think about it. <laughs> it's uh no one's had tabs on the cia in quite some time right right, right. <laughs> we haven't checked That's... into their situation yet it, so they didn't pinpoint it on the cia essentially but yeah the cia hasn't told us on twitter this is what we're doing guys <laughs> top <laughs> one as well you know, uh, socialism like i said it's it's definitely a mirror into how we are handling certain things yeah it's like it was a mirror to the 1980s unfortunately not much has changed <laughs> right I guess it, it was supposed to be satire for future generations. Like, yeah, you know, this is what it was like. And man, have we really circled back around? Yep, that's still pretty accurate. 
<laughs> and I, yeah, it's it's a little damning. And our parents just didn't learn the lessons that RoboCop was trying to teach them. No, oh, and the and the thing is, they we watched it. They let us watch these movies, <laughs> and we still haven't really done much. Like we're yep. trying, but oh, RoboCop, we need you back, bad. I think that's what what it is. Mm-hmm. And the, and the remake didn't have any of this. I mean, it was set in the Middle East because that's the, you know the war that was ongoing. But it it wasn't nearly as scathing as the original mm-hmm. RoboCop was. Yeah. I can imagine. And then we get a commercial for Nukem the Board Game. Sure, this didn't make it into the remake. No. Yeah, they kind of st- stayed away from that. Yeah. And then Morton gets interviewed by the news, and he says that RoboCop is going to get rid of crime in 40 days. And then we see Morton get... He gets promotion and led into the executive washroom. While he's there, he starts talking shit about Dick Jones, who's taking a massive shit in the stall. <laughs> Does Morton have his pants fully down when he pees, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. What do you I, think I, the ball situation is? I don't know. Does, does he rest it on the edge of the urinal? <laughs> His ball is hanging so low. But I, I, for some reason, I thought he, he like dropped trow. <laughs> and I guess it was like an alpha kind of move there. <laughs> oh, at the urinal, you think he's yes. just pants down around his ankles like butters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta go back and watch. But I, I could have sworn that. His pants are like either halfway down and just a show of just I'm letting it all out. If you see it, if you see it, that's on you. Dick Jones is such a good name for a scummy corporate leader, by the way. Oh, that's yeah. I think that's like the template name for yeah. a scumbag uh, executive. Yep. It's like, oh, Dick we, whatever. We, we, we'll, we'll change it if we can think of anything better. Like there's nothing better. There's not- Richard, when, when Boddicker calls him Richard, it's great. It's great, yeah. <laughs> I guess we are in business after all, Richard. <laughs> all the other execs leave, and Jones tells Morton that he had the sa- he had the sale to the military regardless of Ed two hundred nine working or not. And he tells Morton that he fucked with the wrong guy. At this moment, I was ready to yell at the screen, just fuck each other already. <laughs> Man, it's that that power struggle is so great in this movie. Because Morton is the young hotshot coming in, and and Dick Jones, he's not ready to let go, man. Nope. Like he didn't get there by making friends. Nope. So OCP is monitoring RoboCop as he recharges, and he starts to have visions of Boddicker shooting him while he's supposed to be pow- powered down, and he starts to have a freak out, and then marches out of the room. <laughs> as he walks down the hall of the precinct, he walks past Lewis, who introduces herself to him. She knows it's Murphy. She tries to get him to remember, but he doesn't. And he excuses himself and then jumps in a squad car and drives off. So Morton arrives at the precinct and dresses down the captain and Lewis for talking to, to RoboCop. One of the scientists suggests taking RoboCop off the beat, but Morton nixes that. At a gas station, Emil, one of Boddicker's goons, holds up the clerk with Newsy and for good measure demands free gas. <laughs> RoboCop shows up and Emil recognizes RoboCop as Murphy. So he shoots at him, telling him, we killed you. He accidentally shoots the gas hose, so the gas starts leaking, so Emil lights it, and the gas station blows up. Robocop, unfazed by the fire, manages to shoot the tires of Emil's motorcycle and is able to arrest them. I'm slightly upset they didn't have a zoomed-in scene of him walking through the fire. <laughs> That's true, that, yeah. That, that felt like that was should have been in there. Yeah. So Murphy heads back to the precinct and taps into the records to find out Emil's rap sheet and his known accomplices. He tracks it all the way back to Boddicker, Boddicker's rap sheet featuring a long list of murders, mostly cops. The name Murphy pops up and he realizes that that's him and that he's officially deceased. And he takes the his file, he gets his old address and heads there. He sees the, that the house is for sale. He goes in and there are monitors set up as a real estate agent recording, kind of introducing the house to anybody that's going to walk through. Otherwise, the house is more or less empty, but Murphy starts getting flooded with memories of his family in the house. And yeah, like I said, this is probably one of the strongest scenes of this movie. It's like kind of the moment where you see Murphy's humanity is still there somewhere amidst all this craziness. There's still this really powerful scene. I thought that was really well done. And by the way, the whole real estate scene here is a dream during the pandemic. It's just (laughs) to have a person there and not have to risk doing that job <laughs> sure well um, mark what's going on. Try, get it done man you could invent introduce this. it you could invent this yeah you could just be the, a billionaire yeah could, that'd be great could, i could ditch you guys and rub elbows with jeff bezos <laughs> well i guess good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> just try to remember us a little bit you yeah. know yeah i will 
or or at least get on like a better podcast like uh, yeah. yeah i don't know <laughs> what, whatever elon just, musk is doing or maybe i'm just going joe rogan you should no. you should just go all the way steal that idea and then steal this idea like, <laughs> hey, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a podcast where we rip on bad movie and it's gonna be called <laughs> they called this a movie oh my god it's brilliant this guy he's he's full of ideas <laughs> they 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 called this a movie and how did it get made here's my co-host paul Shear. <laughs> sure. just, just, just go on come town yeah just that's a podcast apparently just how do we get on that one i have no idea i think it's like a planes you got to come a certain amount of time it's like kind of be like a pilot you have to have like fifty thousand miles in the air or something like that okay well better start working now that's mm-hmm. a life goal got it yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys i was running out of things to do on my bucket list <laughs> Just make sure to hydrate, Mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the key. So then Murphy heads to a club in search of Leon, played by Ray Wise, to track down Boddicker. Uh, Leon pulls a gun on him, which Murphy immediately knocks out of his hand and then into the hands of someone else dancing there. Then Leon tries to kick Robocop in the balls to no avail, and he asks him where he could find Boddicker. I love that everybody around him is just loving what's going on. Yeah, they think it's like a dance, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, the guy dancing with the gun is pretty cool. Back at his pad, Morton is snorting some cocaine with a couple of hoes when the doorbell rings. It's Boddicker, and he says, bitches, leave. And they do. (laughs) I I like how the one hooker, like, you're going to call me, right? Right. No, this man's (laughs) clearly about to die, sweetheart. (laughs) Read the room. Don't you get the severity of the situation here, sweetheart? (laughs) Yeah, this man just bursted into the house. He's not just coming in to say hi. Yeah. Don't worry about me calling you. Call the police, damn it. (laughs) <laughs> right, right. You're you're free to go. Help me out here. Then Boddicker shoots Morton in the legs and plays a DVD for him to watch on television. Ten years prior to DVDs being invented. And that is such a boss move right there. Pre-recording your <laughs> goodbye message to this guy you're about to kill. Yeah. And it's Jones, and he's there to tell him that he's cashing him out. We could have been friends. <laughs> Then Boddicker leaves a grenade on the table and leaves, and Morton's pad explodes with him inside it. It would have been great if they cut back to the hooker. Like, oh, I, well, I guess he's not calling me back. <laughs> <laughs> my my keys. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my person there. Boddicker and his goons meet with a guy named Sal, who seems to have a very sophisticated cocaine business going. Sal basically tells Boddicker that he doesn't want to be in a business with him because he kills cops, and the heat that surrounds him makes him nervous. They pull guns on each other, but are interrupted when RoboCop knocks down a door and tells them to come quietly. Well, no, it's interrupted by Dan. We got to get this done. Tigers are playing tonight. (laughs) Never missing. Who's the, it's Sal, right? Sal. That's the guy's name, Sal. Yeah. Yeah, What is it's, I forget exactly. What, what is he trying to sell him? I, I, yeah, I think he's trying to, get a taste of sal's business yeah gotcha yeah. okay because i was trying to figure out like what is boddicker selling to him but it's not he's not selling anything it's more he wants I to i think he wants to buy the cocaine business right i guess he wants to take it over yeah, yeah. It, sal's like goons are like so terribly out of shape right? <laughs> they, they, they look like just like regular joes they're not even like badasses boddicker has these mean looking dudes yeah and sal just has like two guys <laughs> Like some, like some guy's name is like Joe. <laughs> so he comes in and a gunfight ensues and everyone shoots at RoboCop, but he just mows everybody down. Boddicker tries to escape, but falls through a ceiling. So RoboCop reads him his Miranda rights as he throws him through several plate glass windows. And then Boddicker squeals on Dick Jones the entire time. I work for Dick Jones. <laughs> Do you hear me? Dick Jones. He runs OCP. Yeah. He's the, OCP OCP. Is the cops. <laughs> oh, man, he does such a good job with this character. He's evil. And then when he's like groveling, mm-hmm. it's so good. Even at the end, like, oh, you're making me nervous, man. Come on. What are you doing? You're making me nervous. It's so believe. <laughs> everything he does is so believable. Yeah. He's the he's the perfect movie representation of what's called a, a chicken shit heel. Yes. In, in wrestling where, you know, boastful and all that. But as soon as you knock him down or put him in a threatening position it's it's also no 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 right the famous yeah, rick flair on his knees yeah he's essentially a coward yeah but when he has his goons around him he's like a, he's one of the toughest sobs out there yeah yeah at the precinct the cops are demanding the sergeant back them up with a strike saying that it's too dangerous for them 
Then RoboCop comes in with Boddicker and tells them to book him because he's a cop killer. And then Boddicker just wants his fucking phone call. <laughs> Spits blood. <laughs> that one phone call is to Dick Jones, who tells him that he'll be out on the street in the morning. And then RoboCop shows up at OCP and heads right to Dick Jones' office with plans to arrest him. Can you imagine in this day and age a killer just being let out on the on the on the street after being arrested so quickly? Yeah. Never happens. I guess if you're no uh, Robert Blake, maybe. <laughs> well, I mean there Kyle are certain House. there are certain people who yeah. are murderers who are allowed back on the street pretty quickly in this yeah. day and age, I'd say, depending on who they and, work for. And pigmentation. Sure. sure. That too. <laughs> yeah. Jones is awaiting him and he tries to arrest him, but he starts to malfunction. And Jones says this is the insurance policy known as Directive Four. So Robocop goes into shutdown mode if he tries to arrest an OCP head. So Jones then unleashes Ed 209 on Robocop. Ed 209 puts a whooping on Robocop, though Robocop does manage to do some damage to Ed 209, including using its own cannon against itself, shooting off one of his arms. Robocop makes it to the stairwell with Ed 209 right behind him, but Ed 209 can't navigate the steps and it falls down onto its back and Robocop manages to escape. Robocop then manages to make it down to the parking garage and is met with several police squads ready to blow him away. His own precinct tries to stop everyone from firing on Robocop, but to no avail. Robocop crawls away as a hail of gunfire rains down on him. He falls down a few levels of the parking garage and attempts to escape. Lewis manages to find him and puts him in the back of her cruiser, and she drives away. Then there's a commercial for the 6000 SUX vehicle, an American tradition, with some great Harryhausen-like stop-motion animation. Oh, that was so cool, with the dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. And then news reports on wildfires in the Pacific Northwest, guys. Never heard of one of those. <laughs> those haven't happened in like two months. <laughs> Such it's a quaint, so... quaint movie. <laughs> yeah. They knew. Like The Simpsons. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just said this is before The Simpsons came out. Yeah. They got everything wrapped up into one little uh, package there. <laughs> These wild fa- fires, however, are caused by malfunctioning civil defense satellites. And then they report on the officer strike. Boddicker shows up to OCP and sexually harasses Dick Jones' secretary. Fun fact, that's actually Kurtwood Smith's wife. He goes to talk to Not Jones really. and, yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed, the, the man on the street interviews that happened during the broadcast, it's mm-hmm. one of those people, Eddie Van Halen or somebody that looks... <laughs> there is, in the oh. trivia... It says, despite his resemblance to Eddie Van Halen, that is not Eddie Van Halen. (laughs) Okay. That is pretty close. That was the, he was talking about how if something happens, it happens pretty much. Yeah. It's specifically in the trivia says it's not Eddie Van Halen. (laughs) R.I.P. Yeah. Good. Put my mind at ease there. (laughs) Mark is learning so much. Yeah. So, Boddicker goes in to talk to Jones, and Jones yells at him for ratting him out and tells him he has to, he has to kill Robocop now because his basically his memory banks can be used in, in any case. It's admissible as evidence. Yeah. That's right, yeah. So, He's screwed. Boddicker refuses, but then Jones entices him with the promise to look the other way in any effort for Boddicker to control the illegal drug market and basically anything illegal that goes on in Detroit after that, but with his help. Boddicker is tr- intrigued, and Jones gives him the RoboCop tracker and also promises to give Boddicker some military-grade weaponry. Then Lewis shows up in an abandoned mill where she has stashed Murphy. She went to the precinct and gets some guns. She mentions that it was deserted, and that must mean that they've started the strike. Then Murphy uses a drill he asked her to get and takes off his visor to re- reveal his half-head, half-computer face. He asks her about Murphy's family and what happened to them. She tells him that they started their life over out of the city. He then asks to be alone. In the streets of Detroit, crime has skyrocketed due to the strike. Windows are being broken and looting going on. Meanwhile, Emil just wants to watch television, and I'd buy that for a dollar. Whatever that television show was supposed to be called. Man, I wish they had gone further into what that was. (laughs) It's great. Like the, The scenes are so out of context. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah, it yeah, seems like it's like a sketch it. comedy or something, maybe. Yeah. And that's I like the guy's catchphrase. Right, because, I mean, he's surrounded by beautiful half-naked women. Yeah. And he's just constantly saying the one thing. <laughs> for, for the longest time, I thought that guy was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. <laughs> oh, you thought he was, uh, what is his name? Ed McMahon? Ed McMahon, right, because <laughs> Ed McMahon had the... Uh, he had his own one line. Hi oh. Right? Yeah, hi oh. You are correct. So, so I thought that was him. I was like, oh, you know, my my young child good. brain just connected the dots there. A good a good Ed McMahon reference for all of our listeners out there. Oh yeah, a ton of them out there. <laughs> well, 
Oh, the oh, the Ed McMahon stands are are happy right now. Right. It's about time. How many episodes and they finally bring him up? <laughs> <laughs> Pay respect to the legend, goddammit. it. <laughs> so Boddicker and his buddies show up and they all got let out of jail. One of his goons even got a brand new car. So Boddicker shows off his new toy, which is an enormous gun. On his buddy's brand new car. <laughs> such a such a great move. <laughs> his buddy comes in like mocking everyone, like I brand new car. Look at this shit. Blah blah blah. Boom, blows it away. Yeah, I think yeah. Emil is even like, oh, that car is nicer than yours, Boddicker. That's what it was. Yeah, I think that's what kind of sealed the deal yeah. on that car. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just go off shooting up the storefronts. To be fair, with that kind of weapon, I might have done the same. <laughs> If it was, if everyone's doing it, I mean, those stores hell have insurance. It's fine. I'm, <laughs> sure. I'm helping them. <laughs> so they use the robot, Robocop tracker, and they're able to figure out that he's at the steel mill. I'm not sure, based on that tracker, how they're able to figure that out. <laughs> it, it's a fixed light. <laughs> yeah. It, it yeah. never moves. It just beeps and flashes. Right. Yeah. It they, looks like there's a map on there, but if that yes. plant was anywhere, like it would have been like. And it and it's zoomed in. So like unless if they were following it the whole time, how would I, they know exactly? If, you know, because I doubt there's any streets or cross streets or anything. <laughs> there absolutely is not. I wonder when they first introduced it early. I just thought it was supposed to beep when you got close to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was almost like a hot and cold beeper. Yeah. Oh, oh it's not beeping now. Oh, now it's okay. Now it's beeping. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I think they try to make it look as if it's on a map. Yeah. As Mark was saying. But yeah. no, it's just a it's one light in a fixed location. Yep. Yeah. And it, it never moves. It's just yeah. it's I, beeping. And they roll out to the steel mill. And as Lewis sleeps, Robocop notices that his target targeting system is messed up. Wakes up Lewis and she helps him by shooting at baby food. Then Boddicker's gang shows up. Robocop tells Lewis to kind of make herself scarce, kinda of hide. So Rob and then as Boddicker's gang is starts walking around robocop throws something to make noise to distract them and then shoots one of them killing him and then a gunfight ensues meal hops in the van and tries to find robocop and he does robocop shoots at him and then gets out of the way at the last second and emil drives the van straight into a toxic waste vat emil crawls out becoming more and more deformed as the seconds go on meanwhile Boddicker and lewis get into a car chase meal runs into leo and leo freaks the fuck out at emil <laughs> don't touch me man <laughs> which is a fair yeah reaction yes yeah according to the trivia that was the first time ray wise saw um they like kept emile's condition a uh, secret to him until he saw him that that goes back to my my uh my question a few episodes ago right how all of these people are <laughs> they're actors they know that something's yeah. going on so I never, I never quite understood. Again, I never quite understood these reactions. <laughs> like, oh my God! No, it's still, it's a person under there, man. It's yeah. not an actual mutant. <laughs> you know, it's your buddy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, it's just, it's this thing called makeup and prosthetics. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah. Get there, man. You gotta yeah. get there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. But regardless, it, the, the, the effects on this character are very very good he yeah. looks terrible in a good way he looks terrible yeah and then Boddicker runs over emil who sort of just explodes like a water balloon <laughs> and he has green blood yeah all of a sudden it's pretty great and then Boddicker then crashes his car into a ditch and lewis gets out of her car and Boddicker shoots her a few times and she falls down a ravine she just gets lit up man <laughs> she had no plan <laughs> no useless like i said useless terrible backup yeah Boddicker goes to shoot her one last time, and Robocop shows up to Boddicker. Meanwhile, Leo tries to sneak into a crane. I think this is at the point where Robocop walks on water. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I the forgot least, about that part. At least subtle uh, Christ reference. Boddicker pretends to surrender when Leo drops a bunch of steel on top of Robocop. But then, Lewis manages to make her way to Boddicker's gun and blows up Leo and the crane. Boddicker sees that Robocop's still alive after the steel dropped on him, but he's pinned, so he grabs a steel rod and stabs Robocop through the chest with it. And then Robo Somehow Ro he feels pain. Yeah. I that was that. like that should have been like the one thing that they should have like taken out. Like, oh, let's not program him to feel pain. I I, I hate when they do that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> a little scream. Why? Why was I programmed to feel pain? <laughs> oh. It's a weird... Uh, I guess it's to show he still has some humanity. Yeah. 
but he's completely robot, right? He's an android. Yeah, I mean, his I guess his brain is the only thing that that's left. This is very it, reminiscent of the end of Terminator Two, too, because yeah, the, the T one thousand got gets Schwarzenegger with a steel rod like that. Right. Uh, yeah, the T one thousand gets ter- Arnold. That's right. Yeah. Yes, but he never flinches. Nope. So that's how it should have been. <laughs> so he stabs him through the chest. Yep. And then Robocop stabs Boddicker in the neck with a hand spike. Pretty bloody. Yeah. And then Boddicker dies. Pretty cool way to go out for Boddicker. Yeah. Stabbed yeah. through the neck. Yeah. Like I said, this was, from what the version I watched, it was the uncut, so we got to see a little bit more. Yep. So Lewis tells Robocop that she's messed up pretty bad, and he tells her they'll fix it. They'll fix everything. <laughs> and just leaves her there. <laughs> Robocop shows up at OCP and an Ed 209 is patrolling the parking lot. So Robocop takes out one of the Boddicker's guns, blows up the Ed 209 unit, and then Robocop goes up to the OCP headquarters and interrupts a board meeting that Jones is running and tells the old man that he has to arrest Jones for murder. The old man asks for proof of the allegation, so Robocop plays his memory banks on the TVs of the of Jones admitting he killed Morton. So Jones takes the old man hostage, but then the old man fires Jones, allowing Robocop to shoot Jones without Directive 4 interrupting. And Jones falls through the window to his death, much to the light of that, much to the light of that one black guy on the board. <laughs> he loved it. He gave a little fist bump. Yep. And Jones' arms grow an extra two feet on the way down for some reason. <laughs> some of the worst. Stop it's animation. Guy, yeah. Oh. yeah, I like the little look of understanding between the CEO and Robocop. Of like I this is why I mentioned that I can't arrest anyone. You know what to do. Ah, oh, so it's like you're fired. Thank you. <laughs> and that scene with Jones falling out of the window. Yeah. I I vividly remember that as a child. <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to look up the reason why his arms are so long. So what I was able to gather as a p- potential reasoning is that so it was a puppet. That was supposed to be built exactly to the size and shape of the guy that plays Dick Jones. But where they shot it, the stage was too low Mm -hmm. for this kind of effect. So what they had to do was shoot it with a wide angle lens of the fall. So when they used that wide angle lens, there was like a fisheye effect that was not on purpose. But because of that fisheye effect, they wound up making the the arms look about two feet too long. But, it's uh, great. I mean, it's it's world renowned, really. Like, yeah. That's a famous scene. Yes. So good. It, it's not quite Hans Gruber falling off a Nakatomi Plus. <laughs> no, no, it's not as nuanced. No. But uh, it still it gets the job done. Yeah. And then the old man asks Robocop his name, and he says Murphy. And that's the all, end. All that was missing was a thumbs up at that point. <laughs> as he that said, Murphy. Frame. Freeze frame thumbs Murphy. up would have been perfect. Yeah, with the uh, the RoboCop theme. The RoboCop theme is great, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just very simple, but it's it's very 80s and it's very kick ass. I love it. Yeah, and that's the end of RoboCop. It's the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> it's pr- uh, prophetic. It's really good. It might be the best movie we watched on here, maybe. I have to, it's, it's possible. Close. Yeah. 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 It's very possible. I mean, the only one coming out, the only two uh, popping off the top of my head are The Running Man and Vampire's Kiss. That might be... I think this might be my favorite movie we've ever done. Yeah. Halloween 3 is one of Halloween my favorites. Halloween 3 is a good one. Yeah. 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 This is a good one. Uh, I think we started the year off on a good uh, well. a good note. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we've already kind of mentioned what I would do to, to make this better. Yeah. And that's really yeah. just kind of creating that backstory between Lewis and, and Murphy. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise I, I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's nothing else. Even, I'm still I'm still staring at this poster because I'm it's, looking at my I'm looking at my Plex uh, library right now on another yeah, computer. And, and if you needed to have that scene where he comes walking into the police station, you could just have him been suspended or something, and mm-hmm. he's coming back. Sure. You know, right? Sort of thing. Hey, hey, Lewis, your old partner's back. I I would have liked yeah. to have seen him maybe arrest a few more people other than just brutally <laughs> destroy them. <laughs> but this again, this was the '80s. It's an action movie. Uh, yeah, and that's, no I, I would say that that's probably part of the satire. Yeah, yeah, is <laughs> the fact right. that he isn't. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not really he's not in there to uh, take names in there yeah. to just kick ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I do you guys have any final thoughts on this? I it's 
This is such a if you've never seen RoboCop, it's so good. Watch it. I really yeah. can't say anything else. Yeah, my uh, my my final thoughts are it's all downhill from here, folks. Yeah. So just <laughs> buckle up. Yeah. Oh yeah, this year coming up is gonna be rough in comparison yeah. to RoboCop. Yeah, and yeah, and it um it holds up surprisingly well in a few places where you wouldn't have thought of even ten years ago. It holding up mm-hmm. for sure, you know, pretty well. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with Ant. Go see this movie if you haven't already. If it's on your checklist of movies, um, in you know, you know, more than thirty years old to go see, make sure you you do check this off the list. Mm-hmm. You guys want to plug your shit? Yeah, uh, at the Aquino 122. That's my personal Twitter. I also go and follow Stranger Damies at Stranger Damies on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, that's it for me. Yeah, so we have our podcast, uh, Stranger Damies, as Dan mentions, airs every Wednesday. We are on a little bit of hiatus at uh, this point um, between campaigns. Um, we got to do all new artwork and all new you know, layouts and stuff like that. So some time to process and, and give the players a little bit of time to maybe uh, fine tune their characters. So the last episode you'll hear is uh, our Talking to Strangers, which is our interview from campaign two. And then the next time you'll hear uh, from us will be uh, my short little um, introduction to the world in, in campaign two. So just be on the lookout for that. Check the Twitter. That's That'll be, you'll get some notice on when it when the schedule is all starting up and um it looks like we may be switching over to streaming on twitch so just uh the, we'll do the full session on twitch and then still do the breakdown by episode for our podcast listeners so just check the twitter for that um and then game vault pod airs every other monday um you can find that on all socials at game vault pod if you search for it uh where you find your podcast it's the game vault podcast um so be sure to check us out and um yeah that is about it okay and this is they call this a movie you can now find us on spreaker just by searching they call this movie we are also available on all podcast streaming apps just by searching they call this movie we're the main that's our main website you can find everything we do on that website the main and we are available on all socials at the main so that's facebook instagram and twitter so technically not all socials but maybe maybe something else in in 2021 but um we are also a proud member of geek vibes nation you can find them at gvnation.com and find them on all socials and all podcast streaming apps just by searching geek vibes nation bunch of great shows top 10 with tia getting the sacred cow kind of nerdy girl seen and nerd bunch of other shows there is a nicks show there's a few other shows uh geek vibes live i know dan has been on a few times bunch of shows about geek stuff if you're into that there's reviews of the mandalorian and everything under the sun basically there's if you're into geek stuff there's probably a show available for you and that's gonna wrap this episode up what a great way to kick off 2021 the movie was robocop from 1987 the director paul verhoven so for dan aquino and mark myers this is anthony del vecchio telling paul verhoven well you certainly made a movie didn't you afternoon. Would you like to try a free sample of our double fudge brownie? Oh, sure. Mmm, that's very good. I- I'll just take one more, just to be sure. Yep, still very good. Some things never change, 
like never being able to take just one free sample. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Mmm, is that macadamia nut I taste? Let me take one more. Sir, mm. yeah, I thought so. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.